Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a flip through and look inside of Exploring Creation with Mathematics from Apologia Level 6. This math curriculum, this level in particular, is brand new. They just came out with this level. Um, I think a week or two ago. So I wanted to give you a look inside this level so that if you are considering using this for next year, you can kind of see what it's all about. We have used Apologia Math this last school year. We used level five and we used level one. And so if you're curious about those levels in particular, I will be sure to link the flip throughs that I have of those down below. Um, I also have some do a lesson with us and things like that if that's helpful too. This level six, follows the same kind of overall style as the other levels do, the same kind of methods, the same way of teaching, the same um, activities start to the day, the same unit projects at the end of the units, and the same focus on mathematics and relating it to our world. So math level six comes with a student book and a teacher's guide. You do need both to complete the curriculum. The teacher's guide has all of the answers in there um, and screenshot kind of images of the student text, which I have always appreciated because I like to be able to see exactly the page, the workout of the problem right there for me. And I think it's really helpful to see it as a visual instead of just a list of answers. Um, so I do really, really love that. It also has some teaching tips and things along the way, um, just different information about the concept and about how to teach the lesson, um, which I love as well. Uh, another thing too that's really helpful with the teacher's guide is that in the very, very back, uh, there's a complete supply list for the level. So these are all of the supplies you need to complete the activities in level six. The other thing that the teacher's guide has are all of the activity pages back here. So after all of these tests, which are really, really helpful to have included as well, these tests for the chapters, um, if you want to check your kid's knowledge a little bit more. But these are all the student pages back here. So these are game boards and little cutouts that they need, little cards, little things to complete some of the activities with math six not all of them but some of them need these so a lot of fun in here a lot of little game boards and little things to do you can also print these off of apologia's website and the instructions for doing that are in the front of the book but that is what i prefer to do because i don't like um ripping out pages of the teacher's guide but whatever you prefer is what you can do so that's pretty much the teacher's guide in a nutshell. Um, something I do want to mention about this level in particular is that this level, the author, Catherine, actually wrote the outline for this level first. So before she wrote the other levels that already exist, this was the first one. Uh, she noticed a kind of a deficit in the way that kids were prepared math-wise in high school. And so she wanted to create this level to really provide a solid foundation for high school math. And so basically math six is a lot of uh, reviewing major concepts that they're gonna need for algebra and geometry and higher level math, but also a lot of introductory concepts so that when they get to algebra, it's not as stressful for them. But the main thing about this level is really solidifying their knowledge before moving into algebra and geometry and all of those higher maths. Something I think is really, really sweet about each level is the little dedication in the front. She thanks people that work with her on this, but it also just gives you a little bit of um, backstory behind the level and why it was created. So like I said, she created this first because she saw poorly prepared high school math students. Um, she put extra doses of conversions, graphing, and data 
And she teamed up with two other people to incorporate middle school science skills whenever possible. So if you're not familiar with Apologia Math, each one kind of follows a science theme as well. And you're able to kind of couple these with Apologia Science and pair them if you want to. You don't have to do it that way, but it is kind of a cool feature. So the focus of this one is, um, I think it's chemistry and physics, I believe. Uh, so that's pretty cool because you can do that science along with this math if you want. Here is the table of contents where it breaks down what we're going to be covering in this level. Unit one is all about whole numbers, decimals, and fractions. And so these are all of the like subcategories that are in that unit. So the different lessons here, talking about order of operations, exponents, getting that long division down, fraction practice, decimal practice, those are important. And then unit two is ratios rates and percents and you get into like ratio tables and equivalent ratios um some more percent conversion stuff unit three is measurement data and probability uh so you're talking about celsius and fahrenheit and measuring different types of measurements so mass and weight and capacity all sorts of stuff the other thing that i love too are these problem solving practices so these are lessons that are kind of thrown in periodically so there's one there um where there's one here so they're thrown in they're kind of random but they work on really getting that like problem solving brain on and i think that that's really really cool it's just like critical thinking skills basically and i love those got some like graphing things here plotting probability and then you get into unit four negative numbers i think that negative numbers can be a tricky concept for kids so i know that apology is going to break that down really well because they always do um so negative numbers here um operations and negative numbers and then you're getting an introduction to algebra uh something also that i will show you in a little bit here is that before each unit begins like when you start a brand new unit there's always like a little story about how math relates to our creator creation in our world which i think is really cool so we're going into algebraic expressions and equations evaluating expressions writing equations all sorts of things here inequalities um, more graphing things then you're going to get into unit six which is geometry we're talking about two-dimensional figures areas of triangles parallelograms Composite figures, graphing some figures, um, three-dimensional figures as well, surface area, volume, all sorts of things. So lots of good stuff, lots of really good skills to really master before going into that higher math. The introduction of the curriculum always starts out like this. So there's different symbols that mean different things. So if you see this symbol in the book, it means there's a skill practice. If you see this symbol, it means there's an activity that we're going to be doing. An atom means that there's maybe a vocabulary word, like a math term that you might need to kind of define and explain to your child. This little molecule uh, symbol means it's time for student practice. And then this is the start of unit one. And so like I said, there's always like a thing that relates math to creation in our world and so you're going into different things here with like the brain and how god designed your brain to learn which is really cool and then you're going to get into chapter one whole numbers and i have seen that the first few lessons in this unit are definitely a little bit of review that carried over from math five which i always love when they start like that because after summer we definitely need to refresh our brains <laughs> so a lot of this is like review multiples that sort of thing almost every single lesson starts with an activity and i get a lot of questions about the involvement of the activity and how much prep it takes they're really simple activities there's not a lot of prep um a lot of it uses things that you would have right on hand. They're very simple and they're fun and they're engaging and we really like them. So 
this one is looks like a game so you need number cards three through ten like uno cards or playing cards colored pencils and two players so it's like a card game to show multiples which is fun sometimes for a lesson you won't actually have an activity to start the day it'll be a warm-up and so the warm-up is supposed to be something to kind of just get your brain moving it's like usually a review on a previous concept or something like that so it's usually just a couple questions uh, to start the day before the actual lesson and here's a little science blurb so this is what she means by including science in there the other levels also have little fact things throughout their theirs as well but looking at this one i honestly think there's a little bit more of these little science blurbs which is kind of cool here's another activity it looks like it's another little game you have the activity here and then this is the lesson and then they give you examples they're really good about giving you examples all broken down which i love because I personally need these to really explain it to my child or help her with things. Um, so I appreciate the examples. So they have example one, example two. They usually do a couple. They'll give you a little bit more here. Here's the vocabulary things that you might have to kind of explain more or kind of make sure your kids know. There's another example. And then this is her page of practice. So she's got to do this page. Then you get into lesson four, which is another warm-up day. It's not an activity. Here is the lesson with the examples. And then her work are these questions here and then this page here. Um, something else I really love is if you look at these pages, there's a lot of space. It's not a bunch of problems crammed together. They're big, they're um, very clean looking, which I really appreciate because both myself and my daughter get overwhelmed when there's like a ton crammed onto a page with math. So I really appreciate the layout of this and the design behind this. It gives you space to work out what you're doing and I love that. Lesson five has an activity here. So you need the lesson five activity sheet. So let's take a look at what that is. So this is the lesson five activity sheet here. So you're gonna cut these out for the activity that you're doing. And then you're going to follow the instructions. So they say, um, rearrange the strips correctly to show each long division problem. Have your parent check your answers. So it's just a hands-on way to practice this long division. And then here is the lesson and examples. It's like a really good refresher here, like bring down the four. I love that they step by step, like remind your child, hey, this is what you do next because I actually do have a very forgetful <laughs> child. And so this is important because it really helps her refresh her memory because once her memory is refreshed, she can do it no problem. It's just like sometimes she has a hard time remembering the steps of things. And this is her practice for the day. Lesson six is a warm up. More examples here, and then her practice for the day. Okay, so let me show you what an end of the unit project looks like. So, the end of the unit project for unit two, uh, ratios in the human body. So, you need a tape measure and people to measure. They go into Leonardo da Vinci, which is actually kind of cool um and then looks like you're you're measuring different lengths of the arms distance from elbow to middle finger you measure all of these things a friend an adult so we would do like uh her measurements and like maybe one of our siblings and then myself and then you would find the ratios for that so the, this unit project is not very involved it's not like a um supply heavy project whatsoever. Some of them are more involved than others. So that's an example of one. And then you get into unit three, which is measurement, data, and probability. And again, they break down a really cool relation to math in the world. Movie math. What is your favorite movie? Write the name below. With the help of a parent, look up the length of the movie. Write that below. And then start time, finish time. So it's just like a little simple activity, lapsed time. Let's look at another um, 
unit project here. So for this unit project, unit three's project, you're creating your own board game, which sounds super fun. Um, they have activity sheets in the back that you can use for the board game. I think you could also probably just do your own if you wanna, if you had a really creative kid that wanted to draw out their own game board and decorate it how they are, or make it more 3D or something like that. But you make the game, you make the rules for the game, you write the object of the game, and then you play your game with your family. Like that's that's really fun. Now I'm just gonna kind of like flip through a little bit so you can kind of see, but it's really kind of the same process. You have either an activity or warm up, the lesson and examples, and then the student practice. So that's pretty much the gist of math level six. I hope that this was helpful in seeing what this level is all about. Um, something else that I wanted to add is that I appreciate Apologia and Catherine and everybody there that, that created this, um, putting in those hands-on activities and uh hands-on opportunities for learning for these older kids. I find that a lot of math curriculums when they're like geared for younger kids, they have there's like a bunch of hands-on math curriculums out there, like a bunch. But I find that once you get into that like fourth grade level, a lot of curriculums do away with them and they just go back to just doing the math and it's not as hands-on and fun. And I just wanted to mention that some kids, even older kids, can be hands-on kinesthetic learners. It's not just the younger kids that are kinesthetic. And I appreciate that they kept that in mind and they didn't do away with those hands-on games and activities and ways of learning. So thank you for that, guys. I appreciate that. But I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you have any further questions on this curriculum, please let me know. Um, I will leave the link for this curriculum down below. Apologia actually kindly sent this over for me um, for my honest review and flip throughs and all of that. But all of the thoughts obviously are honest and my own. You already know that we love this. I will leave the link down below as well as a little discount code for you guys that they provided, which I appreciate. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye.